Off you go about your business, he says from his hospital bed, his big round eyes like popped brown buttons on an iron cardigan. OK, Dad, I say. I don't move. He wants no fuss about dying. I sit in a turquoise coloured chair, lazily scanning a newspaper headline. I pretend not to watch his every move, the cruel torment like a heavy, opaque cloud. I wait for it to clear, but it never does. It hovers like a malevolent fog, dense and impenetrable, murky like the poor lattice of a metal, metal sieve. You've better things to be doing, he says. His white tufts of hair remind me of the creamy froth on the undercurve of a soft sea curl. The TV's incessant chatter in the background grates. Oddly, its refrain adds a continuity that death snidely rebukes. From the window where sky meets sea, there is a perfect steel grey line. So where else would I be, I say. He smiles. He sips his Diet Coke through a thin blue straw, his face weary, restless. Off you go, he mumbles, his left hand motions slightly, a gentle steer to nudge me home. I kiss him on his forehead and tell him I love him. Love you to bits, he says. I walk out the door. I expect the next day to be the same as today, but it isn't. My sister points at our heads and laughs. She puts her arm around my shoulder. Who's taller, she asks a random bystander. She stands up straight like a stern skittle, its body steadily fragile in its certain fate. The wrecking ball waits to blast her into smashed smithereens. Still, she has the pose of a ballerina. You, the kindly passerby tells us, complicit in our childish fun. He gestures at my sister who grins widely. The bag of fluid attached to her by a long clear tube jiggles as she laughs. Yeah, well, I'm older, I say. We chuckle. Thanks for the Diet Coke, she says. Like Dad, I say, too quickly. Like Dad, she says. More for me than for herself. We know what I mean. I feel that familiar fuzzy gauze in the air, its reach stifling our breath, shutting us up. She walks me to the nurse's station. She insists on it. We shuffle along together like an old couple on a regular stroll in their local park. I notice the spray of freckles, freckles on her pretty face, her eyes cartoonish in their size. I'm jealous of your tan, she says, prodding me in the arm with her bony finger. I'm jealous of your skinny, I say. We both smile. The truth is, her frail body is as thin as the skin on our father's corpse. But she knows that, and so do I.